Yeah, so we've had this huge revelation from the dark energy spectroscopic instrument, DESI for short, just telling us that the dark energy is behaving weirdly, basically, in a nutshell. Over the course of three years, they have taken spectroscopic details. In other words, the light coming, measured the light coming and the wavelength of light coming from 30 million galaxies in three years, which is just... <laughs> You just think about how many a day they're managing to do. And the reason they can do it is, I, if I understand right, the plate which collects the light has been designed in such a way, it basically has 5,000 um, points in it, which can, they can move around to look at, at any one time, 5,000 different galaxies. You know, people are probably familiar with the idea that the, the universe is expanding, so that space is getting bigger over time. Very naively, you would think that that expansion would slow down over time because gravity is like an attractive force, so it sort of pulls things in. So whilst it might be expanding, you might think that it's slowing down the expansion. That's the opposite of what we see. Actually, the expansion is, is speeding up, it's getting quicker, it's accelerating, which means there's something pushing it, right? And what's the something? Well, we don't really know. It's, uh, we call it dark energy. So dark energy is the thing that people say is responsible for causing the accelerated expansion. The sort of the, the you know the go-to candidate for what dark energy is is like what's called a vacuum energy or a cosmological constant. It's basically the energy of empty space. So one of the things we know is this that we from quantum mechanics we do expect empty space, the vacuum itself, to actually have a residual energy density. That's the go-to model, but what Desi's telling us is that actually um, dark energy is a little bit more exciting than that, that it's not constant. If that's true, it's amazing. I mean, because it means that there must be something else out there in the universe that we just don't know. Yeah, so Desi are basically telling us that, that it's, it's not a constant. It's actually some, a dynamical form of dark, dark energy. It's changing in time. And actually, the, the way it's changing is really, really weird. That's actually the weirdest part. It's driving us into a regime of parameter space, of theory space, where we call it phantom dark energy. Phantom dark energy, I, I have a little link to that because um, the guy who came up with the, the idea of phantom dark energy is a friend of mine, Rob Caldwell at Dartmouth. And he was doing this work when we were both sharing an office at the Isaac Newton Institute. And I remember him telling me about it. And I was thinking, that's bonkers because it's unstable. Phantom dark energy will, is such that it just keeps driving the acceleration faster and faster and faster. And in fact, the universe ends up going through what we call a, a big rip and it kind of tears apart. But the data seems to be suggesting we're going down there into this regime. It's going phantom. Now, there are lots of ways of coming back up so that you don't end up shooting down. But at the moment, the fact is driving us down into this region is a, is a worry for theory people. They're saying, this we don't think this should be happening. There's quantum mechanical reasons why we don't want to be in phantom regime. We don't think it's consistent. Yeah, so what Desi's doing, it's kind of measuring something called the, the baryon acoustic oscillations. Very simply, what this is, is, is right, like, imagine yourself in the sort of primordial soup of the early universe, right? So, so what you get there is you get these little quantum fluctuations. And those quantum fluctuations are the are the seeds of galaxies today that we see today. It's kind of an amazing fact, right? But, but these little fluctuations, they, they generate little fluctuations in, in the energy density of, of this sort of primordial soup. And in particular, it'll, take, it'll do, cause fluctuations in both baryons, which are the stuff that we're made out of, and uh, photons, right? And in that very early period, those two are tied together um, you know, very closely. And this fluctuation, it starts to sort of propagate through space. The baryons, the stuff, just wants to collapse under gravity, but the, because they're tied in with the, with the photons and the radiation, there's like a pressure that stops them collapsing. So, so they go along together and, they, and they, they propagate through space. And then as the universe cools, what happens is, is that eventually the, the photons like kind of decouple, the two things sort of disentangle from one another, they decouple, and the photons just go off. And that gives us actually the cosmic microwave background radiation. But the baryons are still there, right? And now they haven't got the photons to stop them collapsing. Um, so, so they essentially sort of freeze. So that, that sort of perturbation, that, that, that fluctuation freezes. And you get this, it, it's, it happens at a very particular scale. So they, these things have been sort of 
you know, going along, going along, going along, and then the photons suddenly just go off and the, uh, and the baryons are left to sort of start collapsing. And that happens when they're sort of typically separated at about 130 kiloparsecs, which is about, uh, I think, four times the size of the Milky Way disk. So that's, that, that's a very critical point in which you're having. That's, that's the baryon acoustic oscillation. And then what we do now is we then, then evolve over time and the universe expands. And those baryons, which were, which were sort of stopped at that point, then then start to form the galaxies. And you see a sort of correlation between the sort of the over densities of galaxies in, in, when we do galaxy surveys that is now spread out from that 130 kiloparsecs to a typical separation of about 150 megaparsecs. So, well, DESI is looking for those correlations in, in, in the clustering of galaxies. And from that, they can, they can really read off information about the, the evolution of the universe in the time between when it first decoupled it and afterwards. So it's, there's a lot of information there. Something changing over time isn't by itself so weird. Okay, that's not what's so weird. But if you think about as the universe is expanding, you would expect stuff to become more dilute, right? As the universe is getting bigger, stuff's going to get more dilute. And therefore, you'd expect its energy density to decrease over time. Okay, that's typically what, what's what happens with matter, it's what happens with radiation. And indeed, Desi is saying this is what will happen to dark energy in the most recent phase. So in the most recent phase of the universe, indeed, dark energy is changing and it's becoming more dilute over time. The energy density is going down. That by itself, okay, it's interesting, but it's not so wild and weird. You can easily model that. What's really weird is the other phase. So if you track what the energy density of dark, they're saying the energy density of dark energy should do as you go back in time, it turns out that very early on, its energy density should have been increasing with time. So now it's decreasing with time, but back, back then it should have been increasing with time. So, so this is so weird. So the universe is growing, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and yet the energy density of dark energy is also growing. So the density is going up, even though the universe is getting bigger. So this is really weird. This is not like normal matter behaves at any kind that, that we're really familiar with. It has to be a physically different thing, completely different. And the obvious thing for it to try and be is a scalar field. But it, there are other possibilities that it, it could be that it's a representation of a, maybe we haven't quite understood how matter couples to gravity. As a theorist and somebody who tries to build models of dark energy, it's very, it's, it's just wild. It's just like ordinary matter does not behave like that, right? I can easily create something that, 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 that its energy density will dilute over time, which will decrease. That's, that's fine. I can do that very easily. But getting something that, that actually its energy density is going to grow over time is what you call phantom dark energy. This is ordinary matter that makes sense just doesn't do this. What you need is you need basically some channel to pump energy into the system. And you have to figure out a way to do that without creating all, all sorts of other effects that you don't see. It's not completely impossible, but it's really, really hard. And, you know, we're already having a job getting dark energy out of, out of things like string theory. Um, I'm going to trigger loads of string theory comments now. But Getting one that does this is, would be absolutely wild. I'm not sure it would even be possible. It would mean that um, the consensus which has been there now for a, over a, over a 20 years, that we understand this as a cosmological constant plus cold dark matter plus baryons, isn't the whole story. This, this phantom dark energy, this weird phase where its energy density is growing over time, yeah, I mean, that's, I find that hard to believe. That I feel like that might go away. You can still fit the data with stuff that doesn't do that. But, I mean, the, the, their best fit is doing that, right? You can still fit the data pretty well without doing that. So, so it's, I don't know, my theoretical prejudice says that that's, it's just, it can't be a phantom. Phantoms are too weird, but maybe it is. The idea of dark energy just evolving, of being something that evolves over time and you know, behaves a little bit more normally, that's really, really interesting. And, it presents loads of sort of interesting angles to, as a model builder, but but it's not so wild as having something that just is actually, its energy density is growing. So I, I, I feel like that might go away, but, but we'll see. I mean, maybe it won't. Experiment is the ultimate arbiter, right? So we have to see what the data eventually tells us when it settles down. When we talked about phantom dark energy, Ed started talking about things like big rips and that coming into play. Yeah. Yeah, so it's right. Okay, true. That if phantom, so this is, this is, if, if it's real, then we should, 
thank our lucky stars it wasn't dominating because so, so it's gone away now the phantom according to des if we take it at face value the phantom has gone away it's now been replaced by something a bit more conventional but in the past it would have been a phantom if it had been dominating the universe and be, the phantom had been in charge of the you know be the dominant feature of the universe then yeah ed's absolutely right we would have been driven into a big rip so we should thank our lucky stars that if that phantom was there that it was subdominant because if it hadn't been we'd have uh, the universe would have torn itself apart long ago if you'd like a more in-depth explanation why not watch the full uncut 36 minutes i filmed with professor ed copeland he gives a lot more context a lot more detail even talks about other research in the area it's well worth a look if you're interested in dark energy this cup has in it about i think it's a yoctogram of um uh, 10 to the minus 24 joules of energy, of dark energy, because dark energy is smooth, right? It's throughout the whole universe. 